This is Wittgenstein's Poker by David Edmonds and John Idano. And let me just launch straight in by reading from the opening paragraphs. So it's chapter one is called The Poker. On the evening of Friday, the 25th of October, 1946, the Cambridge Moral Science Club, a weekly discussion group for the university's philosophers and philosophy students, held one of its regular meetings. As usual, the members assembled in King's College at 8.30 in a set of rooms in the Gibbs Building, number three on Staircase H. That evening, the guest speaker was Dr Karl Popper, down from London to deliver an innocuous sounding paper, Are Their Philosophical Problems? Among his audience was the chairman of the club, Professor Ludwig Wittgenstein, considered by many to be the most brilliant philosopher of his time. Also present was Bertrand Russell, who for decades had been a household name as a philosopher and a radical campaigner. I'll miss the next paragraph. Okay. This was the only time these three great philosophers, Russell, Wittgenstein and Popper, were together. Yet to this day, no one can agree precisely what took place. What is clear is that there was vehement exchanges between Popper and Wittgenstein over the fundamental nature of philosophy. Whether there were indeed philosophical problems, Popper, or merely puzzles, Wittgenstein. These exchanges instantly became the stuff of legend. An early version of events had Popper and Wittgenstein battling for supremacy with red-hot pokers. Those ten minutes or so, on 25th of October 1946, still provoke bitter disagreement. Above all, one dispute remains heatedly alive. Did Karl Popper later publish an untrue version of what happened? Did he lie? Well, the discussion got pretty heated, apparently, and that, that's OK within a university seminar group. I, I worked for a long time in um, university department and my head of department used to say, only half jokingly, that if my staff aren't arguing with each other, then I'm not doing my job properly. So arguments, part of the reason for having these seminars, but it was quite heated. And at one stage, uh, Wittgenstein was apparently brandishing this poker to make some point and to emphasise this. Wittgenstein asked Popper to give him an example of what Popper was calling a moral rule. And Popper shot back saying not to threaten visiting lecturers with a poker. And apparently Wittgenstein threw down the poker and stormed out. At least that's the account that Popper later wrote up. The authors go in three kind of different directions in this book. Um, one thing they did was um, track down uh, nine of the surviving 30 who were in the room that night in, uh, in 1946 and they asked them to uh, recall what had happened. These are all now quite eminent people as a high court judge, academics and senior academics around the world, various positions like that. And they've all written, these nine, quite uh, detailed accounts. And when the authors here um, deal with those accounts, they set them in the present tense. And it, it's beautiful writing, and they really take you inside this room. It's post-war, dull and drab. The poker is in an old fireplace. There are um, draft excluders around the window to keep out the draft. It's a very cold October day, apparently. Um, so, so they take you there and, and you, you're in amongst these kind of tweedy, uh, stuffy, um, serious-minded characters all set up for a debate which turns into a great confrontation. The authors also remind us that when Popper died in the mid-90s, uh, uh, 50 years or so on from this dispute, apparently, uh, after his obituary was written, 
all sorts of um, intense uh, discussion and argument broke out again in, in the kind of various journals that, that, that uh, were interested in, in Popper and his, his work. So the authors give a fantastic account of uh, what it was like to be there and ironically of course they point out that the different people who actually witnessed the event have different accounts of what happened. So it's a great irony because an, these people were studying the philosophy of knowledge, epistemology. What is knowledge and how do we acquire knowledge? And, you know, what's happened is that people have acquired different knowledge as people who spend a lot of time thinking about this. So that, that's one aspect of this book. Um, a second aspect is that it does investigate the biographies of uh, Popper and Wittgenstein in great detail, well, in, in, in detail, in, and, and it's a very, very interesting story of both these characters and their personal lives and how they went through the war. Uh, Wittgenstein was in the First World War, um, and uh, the Nazis, they were living in Austria, and, and all the kind of privations and, and, and um, fears that, 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 that had been in their lives, as well as describing their academic trajectories and their lives and how their lives developed. Um, so it, it's a good biography of the personal and the kind of professional or academic lives of both Wittgenstein and Popper. And then thirdly, it looks at the actual philosophical disagreements themselves. And I, I've, I'm not a philosopher, and I've tried to read Wittgenstein in the past, and he's difficult. and, and uh, and this book was good at uh, explaining the main issues of uh, disagreement between these two philosophers. Uh, Popper were, is known as a philosopher of science and uh, Wittgenstein is concerned with linguistics and philosophy. But the debates were, were a major part of academic 20th century philosophy. And this book makes a good fist of giving an, uh, an, at least an introduction to what those issues, issues were all about. So it, it's a varied book. It's funny in places and then it's also um, serious in its academic considerations, but it, it's readable, very readable. And I, I just loved it. I, I loved being in that room with those people in 1946. And the book did a great uh, service in, in, in taking me there. So uh, I, I would recommend it. And, and um, you know, hopefully I've uh, whetted your appetite as well in, in this account. Thank you.